welcome to our review on food security. First thing we actually need to know then is what we're talking about when we refer to this phrase food security. And quite simply, it's just the ability of our human population to access affordable food that's of sufficient quality and quantity. Now, hopefully we know that one of the big things that have threatened our food security in the recent times is that increasing population of humans that we now have. We're approximately 7 billion people on this planet and obviously everyone there needs food. Second thing that's going to be a factor that's going to affect our food security is these changing diets that we've got. They're now way more varied and there's more meat involved in it. Thirdly, we've got climate change. So things like droughts, the expanding deserts, therefore mean we can't necessarily grow food in all those areas we used to. And finally, we do have the risk of new pathogens or pests evolving, which could also affect our ability to produce enough food. So one of the key problems we've got is that the area we actually have to produce this food for our ever increasing population is limited. Obviously, as the population expands, they need houses. We need to have some kind of industry to support all of this, which means that we can't just use all of the space available just for growing food. So what we've got to do is find ways to maximize our production on the space that we do have available to us. So this could be things like maximizing photosynthesis in plants. So using glass houses, as OCR refer to them, or greenhouses in your common knowledge, which we can then control light intensity, temperature, water, carbon dioxide levels, everything to maximize the rate of photosynthesis, therefore making plants grow faster. We can also use fertilizers, therefore replacing any lost minerals from the soil so that we don't have smaller plants or poor fruit growth, etc. We can remove competition and any pests, so using lots of chemicals here, things like herbicides, fungicides and insecticides in order to remove those key elements that could affect the growth of our crops. And we could also just grow pest resistant varieties of our crops or crops that are naturally high yield producing ones. So we mentioned the names of a few chemicals there and we need to know what each chemical actually does. And it's quite logical. When you see the word side at the end, then that means that it's killing something. And the bit in front just tells you what it's killing. So fungicides kill fungi, pesticides kill pests, insecticides kill insects. The only one to go careful of is herbicides. That's not killing herbs, it's killing weeds. But make sure you know those four different things that we can use in order to take care of competition and pests. The other big aspect of producing enough food to feed the population is the type of farming that we use. So we've got a choice between intensive farming and organic farming. Now, when we're talking about intensive farming, this is where we'll use techniques to produce the maximum yield of food from the minimum area of land. And this is going to involve things like fertilizers, pesticides, maximizing animal growth rates by keeping them inside in quite restricted conditions. We'll use a lot of machinery rather than human labor. So you can see a couple of pictures on the right of your intensive farming scenarios. The other alternative is organic farming, and this is using natural methods. So we're not using chemicals or machinery here. And you can see a picture of that in the bottom right. So it's relying on humans. So you would have people going out and weeding the land rather than spraying it with a chemical to kill the weeds. So we need to understand the difference between our intensive farming and organic farming. Hopefully at the end of this review, you can now state what is meant by food security. You can describe those factors that affect the levels of food security and also talk about the techniques which we use to increase food production.